Week 4, Embryonic Folding. The trilaminar disc that was formed during week 3 of development transforms into a three-dimensional embryo by means of two distinct folding events. One of these will be a cranial caudal folding, while the other is lateral folding. Both of these folding events occur concomitantly with one another. First, we will discuss cranial caudal folding, starting specifically by looking at the cranial or head end of the embryo. The two images in this slide depict a sagittal view of the developing embryo. This simply means that the embryo was cut into right and left halves and we are looking at the head end. Rapid growth of the cranial end of the neural tube causes the cranial region of the embryo to flex ventrally. As a result of this flexion, the oropharyngeal membrane, as well as the precardiac mesoderm, otherwise known as the primordial heart, are relocated to the ventral surface of the embryo. Through this mechanism, the primitive heart is brought into proper anatomical position, which is caudal to the head region. The septum transversum is also reoriented in a position caudal to the heart. And this structure will eventually contribute to formation of the diaphragm. A second result of this cranial caudal folding is that development of the head fold will also incorporate part of the yolk sac into the embryo as the foregut. Note that this portion of the yolk sac lies adjacent to the oropharyngeal membrane or future mouth region of the embryo. This portion of the yolk sac thus gives rise to the upper part of the GI tract, otherwise known as the foregut, as well as accessory organs of the GI tract. Organs that are derived from the foregut include the pharynx, esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. It also gives rise to non-digestive organs such as the larynx and tracheobronchial tree of the respiratory system. This slide depicts caudal or tail folding. Again, we are looking at a sagittal view, but this time at the tail end of the embryo. Growth that occurs at the tail end of the neural tube causes the caudal region of the embryo to also flex ventrally. As a result, the connecting stalk is brought to a more ventral position. It is important for the connecting stalk to be on the ventral aspect of the embryo as it soon transforms into the umbilical cord. Folding of the tail end also incorporates part of the yolk sac into the embryo as the hindgut. The hindgut will form the distal portion of the GI tract and the urinary bladder. Take note that prior to folding, the yolk sac extends a small diverticulum called the allantois into the connecting stalk. The allantois will become the means by which the embryo eliminates wastes and, and passes it to the placenta through the umbilical cord. With continued growth of the embryo, an increasingly larger portion of the yolk sac is incorporated into the fore and hindgut regions of the embryo. As demonstrated in image D, the open part of the yolk sac between the fore and hind guts is the midgut. The midgut in initially communicates with the yolk sac by way of a broad vitaline duct. The vitaline duct narrows as growth of the embryo continues. In along with the connecting stalk and the allantois will form the bulk of the tissues of the umbilical cord. Now we move on to lateral folding, which is exhibited in the two illustrations enclosed within boxes. These two images depict a cross-sectional view of the embryo, meaning a horizontal slice that divides the embryo into cranial and caudal halves. 
Lateral folding of the embryo is primarily the product of rapid growth of the ectodermal and mesodermal germ layers. As these layers expand, they begin, begin to fold toward the midline and fuse. The ventrolateral body wall is thus created. Keep in mind that a small section of the body wall is going to remain open in the abdominal region where the developing umbilical cord attaches. Umbilical cord development is not seen within this image, however, as the cut is either too superior or inferior to its location. Also note how the lateral folding has transformed the endodermal layer into a tube. This marks formation of the gut tube. This slide reiterates the effect of the two folding events on the endoderm. The figure to the below right illustrates how the flat intraembryonic sheet of endoderm transforms into a gut tube with foregut, midgut, and hindgut regions. Also, with the yolk sac remaining attached to the midgut through the vitaline duct. Both the yolk sac and its connection to the midgut via the vitaline duct are visible in the EM image of the embryo. By the end of the folding process, the once flat laminar embryo has transformed itself into a three-dimensional cylinder. The somites are clearly visible on the dorsal side of the embryo. And the yolk sac is also visible. However, its attachment to the anterior abdominal wall is hidden. At the same time that the embryo is folding, a neural crest cell migratory event is also occurring. In the future cranial region of the embryo, neural crest cells leave their position lying next to the neural tube and surround the foregut entirely. Once in place, these neural crest cells proliferate extensively to form a series of block-like swellings referred to as the pharyngeal or bronchial arches. A total of six pharyngeal arches originally form that are numbered from one to six. The fifth one quickly degenerates, however, leaving only five arches in total that are numbered as one, two, three, four, and six. The pharyngeal arches can be considered the building blocks of the anterior head and neck. Reduced or impaired migration of neural crest cells into the pharyngeal arches occurs in a number of craniofacial syndromes. By the end of the fourth week of development, the embryo, which is still only about 4 millimeters long, has established the rudiments of most of the major organ systems. Externally, the embryo is C-shaped with a prominent row of somites situated along either side of the dorsally located neural tube. The head is relatively featureless. In the cervical region, pharyngeal arches are prominent. The body stock, or developing um umbilical cord, still occupies a significant part of the ventral body wall and the developing heart is represented as a prominent bulge along the ventral body wall. Caudal to the body stalk, the body tapers to a somewhat spiral tail, which is prominent in embryos of this age. The tail will regress over time.